World of Warhammer, a game rich with lore, culture, and savage factions locked in eternal conflict. But only one of those factions truly matters, a society known for its equality, equally hating everyone around you. Today, we're going to be adjusting everyone's right to exist by achieving total peace hammer through a complex and intricate diplomatic means of war and genocide. Let's begin. Our very first enemy are actually our own people, who gathered all the bald men in the empire and presented an argument for bad haircuts. But allow me to give you my counter argument. After we defeated the first army, the city looked submissive and breedable. Our main goals this game will be very simple. Claim the Sword of Cain, cleanse the lands of other factions, and beat the ultimate crisis. With that in mind, I started off by investing into military and economic growth, it will help our peasants not to starve to death, as well as recruit a second general that will serve as a unit delivery driver. In a few turns, we took over two more cities, which only left them with a fort in the mountains. We baited out the enemy by flashing our smaller army dressed as a bunch of femboys, causing them to overextend to where I got reinforced by a nearby town full of angry parents. We took the fight to the woods, and after killing about 95% of my own troops, we managed to win. I transferred any units that still had any functional limbs to the main army and launched the final assault, which somehow showed up as a win and auto resolve, with that I successionists were defeated. Then I moved my general back to the capital to refit and increase the size of my army, preparing for the next war by improving our infrastructure and spending like 10 minutes trying to deal with every faction around us. One important mechanic of the empire is imperial authority, ranging from live laugh love to 90s Balkan relations, as well as our relations and fealty to other elector counts which can be increased and decreased by various events. But the only diplomacy we will need is 30 tons of steel. At this point, a huge stack of endangered animals has spawned in a neighboring faction which presented us with an opportunity. See, the world of man needs to be united. United under our banner. So we need all the territory we can get because I enabled ultimate crisis mode and I might have gone a bit overboard. So of course, we're going to let them commence their genocide for the good of the remaining empire. All we have to do is just keep burying the bodies fast enough before our colonists move in or they get raised by the Romanians. Signed a non-aggression pact with the elves so I could betray them at my own convenience and I tried setting an ambush for the beastmen, which they of course ignored. Given how close their army was, I decided to manually fight this battle and to try to minimize the losses as much as possible by sending in just one guy. Soon, the majority of these beautiful lands were ours, if you ignore all the blood and limbs everywhere. All that was left was the capital. Unfortunately, instead they decided to attack me and I was forced to put them down. Well, not to worry, as I had a plan B. I retreated into one of the nearby settlements and waited for the different faction to take the bait. In the meantime, we received a plague from Festus, one of the Chaos Lords, so I decided to kill him and retake the settlement, with which we shared our gifts, of course. We also now had enough loyalty to form a confederation with another Electra Count, absorbing their country and armies. After the last city fell, it was time to mount a rescue operation. Swooping in as saviors of mankind, AI decided it was a good idea to attack a smaller army right next to the settlement. You know, where my main army is. Estes was on the move from the other side, however, sacked our settlement, and then we sent a smaller group to deal with it, while simultaneously taking down the goblins, whose city name I'm a little too wide to utter loudly. We then mounted an offensive, which we had to fight manually of course to lower our casualties, and after that we surrounded the city and took it with a decisive victory. Festus was now a homeless man, and the only way to deal with homeless people was to ignore them and pretend they don't exist. Politically, we were on a good standing with the Dwarven factions, which was good because we needed their immense wealth to power the powerhouse that is our war machine and my metrosexual lifestyle. Continuing our personal crusade against literally anything that breathes, or doesn't, I have positioned my army for an unwarranted cavity search with our blades because our people accused us of warmongering. But it was nothing a little tax relief couldn't solve. Continuing our advance through these godforsaken lands, we got, oh that kind of rhymed actually. We got a decisive victory on the fort, eliminating one of their armies, only to be met with two more. So instead of fighting them, I decided to go to and occupy the rest of the Mangal country, which in turn caused them to split their forces in an attempt to retake it, so we just marched on their capital. Since our smaller army was forced off a siege, I decided to take refuge in a nearby settlement, to sample the wine and bolster our strength, a mistake because it was in fact blood. Our blood. But what I didn't realize was I accidentally robbed Stark their army by baiting them with my own units, and I was able to eliminate their second one, which meant now it was just simple 1v1. In short couple of turns, I managed to basically burn their country down with little to no resistance and eliminate three out of their four armies, leaving us with a great spot to rebuild our lost troops and take the rest of the cities. Then my army moved into a position to attack the fort once more, which they reinforced with one army and moved away their second smaller one, which in turn gave us a close victory and caused them to sue for peace, as they only had a smaller force to try and contest our advance, which very much like me after November didn't last very long. 
And with that last pockets of resistance eliminated, it was the end of the vampires. Started getting on friendly terms with the dwarves as the only language they understand was money and increased our imperial authority, which put us in a great spot for confederations, since we were planning to invest heavily into war machines and form Ranklin's first tank division, I diverted our research towards our steam tanks. As our current units were pretty garbage and could not hold their own against literally any infantry in the game. Our ally was getting raided by the northern tribes and decided as a gracious emperor that I am, now that they lost all of their settlements, to step in and resolve the situation. Using that turmoil to confederate the Golden Order as well, which in fact gave us a short campaign victory, but in order to ensure the peace and stability of the empire, I've decided to go and secure our northern borders, driving the Vikings out and colonize any ruins along the way. At the same time, considering our future goals, I thought it was a great time to send Carl Franz on a special cruise mission, to retrieve a special weapon. Luckily on our way there, we found an abandoned settlement, which we could colonize to use as our forward base of operations, playing historically accurate Europe of sailing to far lands and search of treasures. Unfortunately, there was a wild goose chase as the sword was nowhere near the shrine. At this point, I spent about 20 turns trying to find the sword and with the way things were going back home, I was kind of forced to return. Let me back up a little. While the Emperor went on his world-seeing tour, we have launched a little campaign for the North. And when I say little, I mean a full-scale war against the entire northern side of the map. First, we secured the molotov ribbentrop Pact with the Slavic factions to promise territory for their support as the road ahead was going to be paved in blood, as well as signing an alliance with the dwarves. In a few turns, we liberated the previously occupied Empire territories and even sent a sizable force towards the northern side, but surprisingly, we weren't prepared for to face the harsh winters and our clothing was more akin to a renaissance fair rather than that of a military campaign. We also got war declared by some random rogue faction, on top of having a bit of vermin infestation that we just couldn't ignore. We were on the other side of the world, we were basically at war with four factions, trying to contain them in the north and in the ruins of the cities, which, despite our best efforts to hold, were simply no match for the superior might of the rattling guns and steroids. We got attacked by a registered sex offender and attempted to support our troops to the second army. Using the confusion of the war, I also pulled a scave in and declared war against the ogres in the south. As we were getting raided to oblivion, I raised another army, which was a great timing as one of our armies unfortunately got 9-11s. And with no hope, supported reinforcements nearby, our last remaining northern army marched bravely into the night to meet their honorable end. The war was developing not necessarily in our favor and the people were beginning to get angry. The emperor was going on a vacation cruise whilst we just tossed two armies in the north and the enemy made incursion into our lands. Another army was tied down in the south in the war against the ogres and the rats were using our settlements to make human stews. With no other choice, I have raised yet another army with the little influx of our coffers. With the confederation of yet another faction, we got additional territories and one more army, which was very much needed. When our upgraded and more expensive units finally made it to the north, it was an easier campaign, since apparently rockets counter pretty much anything that moves. Which brings us back to the turn 84, and the Emperor's return, after which the Sword of Cain was immediately found and he leapt again. With the explosion of Ecstatic Legion from our lands, avenging our fallen armies, we were finally back on the offensive. We were taking the lost settlements, and this time actually using some strategic maneuvers. But we got a cleared on by Iceland, and more importantly, someone once again claimed a sword. After they took down the main city, and the gates so they couldn't escape, the only thing that was left was burning down the shrine. Now I don't care that our ally was attacked, and that is why my hands were finally gripping an elven sword. With this, we shall finally purge the world, starting with the yellow snow-eating savages, and we'll be taking no prisoners. After a few brutal turns, we managed to cleanse the land. One minor problem though, all the cities have frozen climate status, meaning we get a permanent debuffs as we're not acclimatized to this weather. Also imminent and constant rebellions unless we station a sizable garrison. So instead, we were going to lead them to their fate far worse and slowly sold off the lands to the Russians. On the south side of the borders, we got attacked by Game Newell coming after our shekels and timing just could not be more perfect, as I was excited to test our new weapon. Growing a little overconfident at the same time, which was the start of a very painful but valuable lesson for the endgame. We quickly scrambled to raise another army as we had no troops in our homeland and Chaos Warriors at two full stacks. The newly raised army wasn't so lucky however, let's just say not even the rockets could save us this time, as we got ran through by more bodies than the most popular girl in your school. In an attempt to slow them down, I sent another army to hide in the nearby woods, hoping for an ambush, but these tough bastards needed some heavier weaponry. So I finally decided to form the first tank corps of Reichland. In the meantime, the sword proved more than capable, cutting through wads of enemy units and seizing settlements with ease. The crisis happening in the middle of our empire I redeployed our armies to the home front and started trading more settlements for money. At this point, we were given a choice. 
keep the sword and accept some penalties or return it. You know which one I picked. Speaking of, the warriors of chaos were still running through us and I decided to spring a trap by sacrificing one of the settlements. Which actually worked in the end, although the people who would die probably didn't think that was a good idea. After decimating the most elite chaos warriors, we finally were able to purify the lands once again. But because of the sword, the unrest will never stop, and we'll pretty much have a permanent handicap with rebellions happening across our empire. Speaking of corruption, the next targets were Skaven, as they in a typical rat fashion launched numerous attacks against us when our armies were occupied elsewhere. We were now a dominant power in the region and even the world, only rivaled by the OnlyFans Union. We still had some gaps in our region, primarily the Wood Elf areas here than here. The north was somewhat secure and being slowly transferred to the Slavs and the Skaven in the south were getting pushed back. In the east we were allied with the dwarves but had an inevitable war brewing with the Chaos Dwarf. And in the west we had Bretonia which we allied out of pity and Cult of Pleasure was slowly taking over Ulf 1 and becoming a world power. On turn 123, since the dwarves were closer and also because they declared war on us, I decided to field test our tank core. We also got another, and this time a final choice, between keeping or relinquishing the Sword of Cain. On one side, we'll be subject to some pretty significant debuffs that will make our armies way more expensive, but on the other hand, it will make us more powerful than any Jedi. And I'm doing all this for the people, to protect them. The only way to relinquish the sword after this point is to get it off our dead body. With the Skaven capital in sight, it ultimately fell to our two advancing armies, depriving them of their best units. Hanks, as proven by history, turned out to be very effective against axes and swords. And in addition, I have created an army of cheese, which I tested out in one of the missions. And let me tell you, no amount of showering could get the stench off of us. And more importantly, it was very good. But it could be better. Eventually, we pushed the dwarves back into the mountains and after a few more settlements, they ultimately sued for peace, leaving us with an easily defendable position in the mountains, as we were nearing the critical moments of our empire's existence. In the next 20 turns, we'll basically decide our fate while the game was telling us to quit now. As I couldn't hold the Skaven Blight due to the combination of unacceptable climates and the Sword of Cain, I sold it to the pirates, which kind of upset everyone, so I was forced to invest in some embassies and take back the settlements that I just sold. Given how much the elves were expanding, I formed a military alliance with the colonial faction to try and threaten them in the future. Even the mummies were not able to resist the Riz of Cain. At this point, some of the apparent gaps in my defense were worrying and I realized I was a little too late to fill them, making a strategic error of keeping my allies around and not being genocidal enough. I even got attacked by one of the Backstreet Boys and since we had no armies in the north, we had no form of response. So instead, I decided to have some fun putting down the lesser factions, taking down the rats and pirates once and for all. So, this was our situation. With very little time left to prepare for the Great War, I have moved my troops deep into the jungle to at least take out the elves that were my allies almost the entire game, and consolidate all of our forces to a smaller, easier to defend choke points. Economically, we were still in a decent position, politically, not so much. Only after the enemy armies have spawned have I realized just how fucked we really are. After raining down some democracy on the knife years, I tried sniping on supported weaker armies, but allow me to introduce you to the new morning alarm sound burning down and looting all of our settlements and that was just one turn. Given the severity of the situation and in order to ensure the security and the peace of the Republic, the Republic will be reorganized into the first galactic empire. A lot of these fights we just couldn't win so the only choice was retreating and sacrificing more settlements. Ultimately, I have decided to just completely abandon the outer territories of the empire and focus primarily on the core provinces catching any overextending armies and try to even out the odds. Our money has tanked and so did a few of our armies. Every single stack was now back at the capital, ready to die for the cause, completely surrounded in all directions. In order to gain some money, I have sold any valuable pieces of land that we had, as they will be lost anyway, sooner or later. For a while, I was able to maintain a valiant defense, sending out the forces where they were needed, with a battle of Aelhart seeming to be the deciding moment in the war. The Emperor has stood guard defending against the hordes of enemies, fully embracing the dark side, shattering two enemy armies and mopping up the survivors. Now, our southern front was being pushed, so we retreated until the northern army groups were finished repelling the attack and able to divert south to reinforce as we were uh, getting pretty much run over by the dwarven equivalent of tanks, shirtless men. Here's a fun fact, if you ever run out of money, you can't reinforce your armies, as they will begin to slowly decay as the men desert the ranks. To alleviate the issue, I have joined the war against the Chaos Dwarfs. Eventually, I was able to drive the rogue armies away from the southern border, returning some hope to our survival, until it was gone once more. 
At this stage, the only way to win is to either kill everyone or achieve peace with the empires that are no longer on speaking terms. This was about 5am in the morning and at this point I was just ready to call it here. In conclusion, we managed to secure our mainland territories and defend it against the hordes of enemy armies. There are still a lot of enemies left but we have survived the worst part of it and maintained a strong enough force to make a potential comeback. The future of the Empire is still shrouded in a mystery and I thought it would be a good point to end it here ambiguously. 